All right, guys. Uh, we've talked about cylinder heads a ton in the past. Uh, I'm going to talk about what we do now, what we suggest, and and how we want to see cylinder heads for longevity. Uh, mainly, you know, safety and longevity. Zero failure is kind of our mantra. Um, however, we do realize that not all of our customers are millionaires, open book checkbook guys, uh, and nor do we really cater to them. Um, we like to do with the average dude who just wants to go fast on you know, an average guy's budget budget. So, uh, basically to start this off, we've talked about cylinder heads a ton. All I'm going to focus on now is how we got to where we're at now, the products that we suggest and run and what you see on our page and what you get back in messages. This video will have a, uh, written breakdown on my Facebook page for the sales section for how we're getting to this now so that we don't have to keep repeating ourselves in messenger and in emails. So let's start this off by saying that the GM valve seats that they put in, the LT heads just suck. There's no way around it. I used to think it was the lobes were too aggressive or you float the valves or whatever. Um, but now that I've seen basically everybody's camshafts and heads and, and you know even the stock, the hundreds of sets of heads that we've gone through, almost all of them end up having chip seats one way or the other. From all the way down to a stock car, you know, it's been run hard up to head cam cars that we pull back apart later on. So through that, we decided um, that we were going to start replacing the seats. First, we went with copper beryllium intakes because we, when we originally started replacing the seats, we went with a, uh, a custom 2165 intake valve that we had made originally by Victory. And now we're having Exeldyne make them. It's got, um, you know, hardened uh, tips, so you don't need to run um, lash caps. And consequently through that, we ended up also designing our own exhaust valves to our specifications. So the intakes and the exhaust of either the stock sizes or the upsized uh, all have my um, angles that I want in them and how many I want in them. Um, the umbrella and, and all the other stuff shaped the way I want it. Anyway, we're gonna go to a ductile iron top to bottom basically because that way you can run either stock valves stainless steel valves or our titanium valves or a mixture of both now titanium valves are freaking expensive you know and so we're trying to cater to the average budget guy but we're also you know a zero failure kind of company i, I don't want you know you'd have to spend money twice i don't want to see you drop a stock exhaust valve and take out a ten thousand dollar motor because thousand dollar you know titanium valves were too expensive like i said one of the options there is where we've been using manly we're going to look at ferria or however you say that now we're trying to find the lightest uh, stainless steel option for the exhaust and that's basically because lately i don't know if it's people doing terrible burnouts and think that the rev limiter you know is where you need to sit for three years in the burnout box but the hollow stem gm exhaust valves are simply dropping that could be again you know, low profiling, uh, spring pressures, you know, all those kinds of things. But basically to eliminate all of that, to, so we can run, you know, make the most power we can with the smallest cams possible, you know, and, and be faster, we've basically been working around that bad valve seats. So when we started replacing, replacing valve seats, um, we did start to see, you know, exhaust valves drop. Um, I don't know if we've seen too many intakes. So long story short um any of the dual valve springs that we've seen out there um with any sort of camshaft uh that i feel is going to make decent power you're basically going to run into valve float around 6800 rpm so the cure for that has seemed to be these conicals that we use now and to get the right install height um you know we had to get these um uh, retainers basically so again with the hardened uh the hardened tip there's no need for a lash cap the retainers and the seats that we use and all that stuff come back at 1900 installed and we've also gone to bronze valve guides which i don't think you're going to be able to see yeah but anyway so a lot of issues we're seeing too is there seems to be a geometry issue with this head just like the ls7 head and the ls7 or excuse me the exhaust um guides are somewhat worn out and actually the intakes are somewhat worn out uh even kind of on fresh heads it almost seems to like gm programmed a little bit too much clearance on the stock head um so to address that also 
you know, just like with the LS7s back in the day, uh, straight to bronze valve guides. That way we can set our clearances properly. And you kind of end up with a brand new head. Um, our stock castings have held up well against the competition being the aftermarket casting so far. Um, does the price go up? Sure does. But you got to think what you're trying to do with this head. If you're a grudge racer, this is the perfect head. There's no outside indications that the head's been touched, yet this head, you know, has made upwards of 700, 730 rear wheels so far. Um, you know, naturally aspirated. And there's no way to tell from the outside that anything's been touched. You, you know, run, we run stock bolts, stock head gaskets, and you can spin this thing to eight grand pretty much all day long and not worry about it. So that's where we were going with it. Now, let me go back to those options. So when you hit us up, basically what we're going to tell you is what we suggest is you do the full deal. Titanium intakes and exhaust, seats, guides, the conical springs, and all that stuff. That's basically as bulletproof as we can make this head, in our opinion. Um, step down from that is going to be replacing the uh, titanium intake, um, or excuse me, replacing the titanium exhaust with a stainless steel exhaust. Hopefully this latest exhaust valve that we found will be lighter. Um, long story short, stock intake, 97 grams, stock exhaust, I think it's like 67 grams, um, or maybe 76, I'll have to check. The lightest exhaust valve we've been able to find up to now was like 97 grams. Um, but even at 101 gram with the conical springs, we're spinning one of these setups to 77, 7800 all day long every day. And it drives to Florida on the weekends. So not really a concern. However, light makes right. So we're going to tell you we want you to go with the titanium intake and the stainless steel exhaust. And if you're boosted, there's nothing wrong with stainless steel exhaust over titanium. Now, step back from that would be stock intake valves, um, stainless steel exhaust valve, seats, and guides. Um, you know, trying to kind of go back from that, I guess I would, you know, in my opinion, you're, you're taking your life in your own hands running the stock exhaust valves because the hollow stem runs all the way down to the valve head. Uh, I wish I had one here where it was broken. And they're not sodium filled or anything, but just behind here is where the actual hollow stem comes to. There's really no strength there. Um, and as things get hot, things move around, exhaust, uh, you know, guides get worn and stuff like that, and valve float and all the other things uh, bounce on the seat. A lot of factors. There's really not much at the end of the day that you can do to save that stock exhaust valve, um, in our opinion, with the products that we run. There's always going to be somebody who's going to argue something. Um, maybe you could get like a super duper soft lobe and run an extra 15 degrees of cam duration to make the same power just doesn't interest me. So, um, you know, so basically, like I said, that's what we're after. Uh, longevity, zero failure, being able to rev the motors if you want. Um, so in my opinion and through all the testing and everything we gotten to this far, if we want to do that conical springs, um, uh, with our custom valves and replacing the seats and guides. And like I said, I'll type most of this out so that we don't have to keep retyping it every time someone asks what's up with our heads, and I'll put the prices and all that stuff in there as well. All right, y'all. Have a good day.